is automatic. Your eye is constantly focusing. Your eye sees in color. Your eye is instantaneously developing. No wonder the psalmist says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Think about your ear, an architectural wonder. Sound waves activate your eardrums, 73,000 vibrations per second, moving from the outer to the middle and then the inner ear. Hold the marvel of the human body. And then there is the nervous system. We talk these days about in this mundane circumvention, everybody possessing a laptop computer, but everyone does have a head top computer. And may I say, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no computer on the market that can approximate with the human brain. 30 billion nerve cells known as protons, neutrons, electrons, and they are all interconnected. The marvel of the human body. Seven, verse seven, eight laws, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. God tenderly worked on man until he was satisfied with his productivity from the dust of the ground. James Weldon Johnson in his famed poem, The Creation, said it about as well as it could be said, and I quote, like a mammy bending over her baby. God formed man by kneeling down into the dust of the ground. People used to laugh and scuff and scorn, sniggle and grin about the human body being made from the dust. The clay, the earth. But they don't sniggle anymore. In fact about it, the NASA Ames Research Center reported in the Reader's Digest, and I quote, that they look at the elements in the human body and all of the elements in the body are found in the ground. Exactly what it says at the front door of God's Word. And the Lord God from the man of the dust of the ground. Today, mankind, as we know, is finessing his gene pool. He's doing certain things with what we call stem cell research. They justified by saying it will solve the diseases such as Parkinson. Alzheimer's disease, and as a result, we are having cloning now. Cloning of plants, cloning of animals. So we have to say to you that man will never ever be able to make another man as has God. Because God made man from the dust of the ground. P. E. Lawson, the great English sovereign, said, and I quote, that in the average body, there is enough water to fill up a 10-gallon barrel. There's enough fat in the body to make several bars of soap. There's enough carbon to make 9,000 lead pencils. There's enough phosphorus to make 2,200 matches. There's enough magnesium to make one good dose of salt. Enough iron to make one medium-sized nail. Enough lime to whitewash a chicken coop. Enough sulfur to rid one dog of all of his fleas. And enough sugar 
to fill up one sugar shaker. And if you could decompose all of these elements and fit them into dollars and cents, with the capitalistic monetary system of the 21st century as is, it will approximate in value to be only about three dollars and seven cents. Think about it. Think about it. Your body, my body, DJ's body, worth only three dollars and seven cents. Think, ladies and gentlemen, about the trouble we go through, the expense we put ourselves to just to make three dollars and seven cents worth of dust look good. Really good. We buy 100, 200, 300 thousand dollar homes just for three dollars and seven cents to live in. We buy 50, 60, 100 thousand dollar cars just for three dollars and seven cents worth of dust to ride around. We buy a 100 dollar hat to put on top of a 10 cent head. We are nothing but dust. Isn't it amazing how we strut around as if God has made us out of gold, silver, diamond, or some other precious metal? We act as if God reached up on a shelf to get us when he reached down on the ground and made us out of the dust of the ground. What says in essence, it doesn't matter how far in school you've gone, whether you have your PhD, your MTH, your BDAB degree, that does not matter, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter how many diplomas and degrees and sheepskins you have on your wall. You're nothing but a smart chunk of dust. And I get sort of tickled sometimes and chagrin with a grin when I think about how one pile of dust walks around acting like it's better. Another pile of dust. How one pile of dust gets beside itself and won't even shake hands with another pile of dust. How, how, how one pile of dust, ladies and gentlemen, will get mad with another pile of dust because what that pile of dust said about this pile of dust that it was born with that pile of dust. I just don't understand. <laughs> Bottom line, you can put lipstick on your lip, words on your cheek, powder on your face, wig on your head, $2,000 suit around your body, $1,200 pair of lizards, and alligators on your feet with nothing but a good looking, sweet smelling, humble chunk of dust. From dust, thou art. I'm not over talking to you. Back to dust, thou shalt return. And you know, that's the reason why the older we get, we don't grow older by getting straighter and straighter and straighter and straighter. We grow by bending and bending and bending and bending and bending. Never miss up the fact that I'm on my way back. So where I came from. And the Lord God found man of the dust of the ground, that's body and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, that spirit. And man became a living soul, that soul. Watch. God breathed in.
into his nostril yes. the breath of life. Yes. In other words, God breathed into Adam the breath of life, and it was the breath spirit yeah. out of the Hebrew shade yeah. Yeah. breath of yes. God yes. that caused dust to be a living soul. Yeah. 